All right, here we go. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. The moment you've all been waiting for is finally here. Up until now, this has been an intimate affair just for the people in this room, you fancy types. But now we are about to unveil the Boston Bruins All Centennial Team, presented by Rapid 7. We are welcoming fans all over the world now who are tuning in on Nesson.com and Nesson360 and BostonBruins.com. And here's the way we did it. Two goalies, 12 forwards, six defensemen. In essence, this would be the greatest single lineup the Bruins could ever put on the ice for one game. And legendary is the word we use to describe these 20 men. Each of them has left an impact on the organization, the city, and the game of hockey. And simply put, they represent the best of what it means to be a Boston Bruin. Now, to congratulate each of these men on their accomplishment and present them with a special gift, I'd like to welcome Charlie Jacobs back on stage. And then we are ready to go. Steve, kick it off. Drum roll, please. We don't, we don't have that. We spent the money elsewhere. Here we go. First up, we're going to start with the goaltenders. Our first all-centennial team honoree was a key element to the success of the Big Bad Bruins. He once went undefeated in 32 consecutive games, an NHL record that still stands today. With one of the most iconic goalie masks ever, he backstopped the Bees to two Stanley Cup championships in 1970 and 1972. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the first member of our all-centennial team, goaltender Jerry Cheevers. And our next honoree is one of the legendary netminers of the Boston Bruins and their history. He arrived to Boston in the late 1930s, hailing from Minnesota as one of the Bruins' first American players. Nicknamed Mr. Zero, he made an immediate impact, picking up the Calder Trophy in his rookie year and claiming two Vesna trophies over the course of his career. An eight-time NHL All-Star, he backstopped the Bruins to Stanley Cup championships in 1939 and 1941. Here to posthumously receive this honor on his behalf, please welcome Tom Brimzik, nephew of our next All-Centennial Team honoree, goaltender Frank Brimzik. And now on to the forwards. Our next honoree is one of the NHL's biggest superstars. Even though he's now just hitting his prime, he continues to rise in the ranks among all-time Bruins scores. Last season, a history-making season, he exploded for 61 goals, became just the second man in franchise history to do that. An offensive threat every time he steps onto the ice, he keeps the fans on the edge of their seats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next honoree, forward David Pasternak. And our next player was named the 27th captain of the Boston Bruins just a couple of weeks ago. His relentless style of play and skill with the puck has stifled opponents since he made his debut for the Bruins in 2009. An offensive threat and a skilled penalty killer, he is consistently among the top shorthanded goal scorers in the NHL. And of course, as a member of the 2011 Stanley Cup Championship Bruins, he remains a fan favorite at the Garden. Ladies and gentlemen, Brad Marchand. The next honoree was another core pillar of the Bruins of this generation. After being drafted by Boston in 2004, he spent his entire career here playing more than 1,000 games, sitting in the top 10 all-time in scoring. Known for his clutch performances in the playoffs, he was a member of the 2011 Stanley Cup champion Boston Bruins. 
Ladies and gentlemen, our next All Centennial Team honoree, forward David Krejci. Our next honoree was drafted by the Boston Bruins in 2003. And with skill and poise beyond his years, he made an immediate impact as just an 18-year-old, becoming a cornerstone of the Bruins in the new millennium and taking over as captain in 2021. One of the best two-way forwards of all time, he eclipsed the 1,000-point marker and earned a record-setting six Selkie trophies over the course of his 19-year career. Known for his class, his compete, and his leadership, he helped return the Stanley Cup to Boston in 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, Patrice Bergeron. Our next honoree was picked 14th overall by the Bruins in the 1971 NHL Draft. The quintessential Bruin, his passion and toughness are synonymous with Boston Bruins hockey. A prolific producer and captain for Boston during his playing days, his leadership skills translated well to a role behind the bench in the late 1980s. <laughs> Known by some as Taz, his number 24 hangs in the garden rafters. Ladies and gentlemen, our next all centennial team honoree, forward Terry O'Reilly. Our next honoree joined the Bruins in 1976, and he thrived under the tutelage of coach Don Cherry. One of the NHL's top talents, he scored 40-plus goals in five consecutive seasons in the early 80s, earning the nickname Nifty for his masterful work with the puck. His number 16 hangs in the garden rafters in recognition of 12 incredible years as a Boston Bruin. Ladies and gentlemen, forward Rick Middleton. Next up is one of the great players and builders, builders in Boston Bruins history. Along with teammates Bobby Bauer and Woody Dumart, he completed the Kraut line, was known for his impressive skating ability. The first Bruin to have his name inscribed on the Stanley Cup four times, he served as team captain, head coach, and assistant GM, and general manager across his illustrious career here. Regarded by many as the ultimate Bruin, his number 15 hangs in the garden rafters, here to posthumously receive this honor on his behalf, please welcome Nancy Summer, daughter of our next All Centennial Team honoree, forward Milt Schmidt. Our next honoree truly embodied the spirit of the big bad Bruins and the lunch pail AC. He spent his 17-year career with the Boston Bruins, dominating puck battles and taking care of business. Along with line mates Ken Hodge and Phil Esposito, he was a key ingredient in two Stanley Cup victories. He racked up 20-plus goals in eight seasons and proved a strong leader for the team, taking over as captain in 1977. Here to receive this honor on his behalf, please welcome Becky Diudo, the daughter of our next honoree, forward Wayne Cashman. Now, Cash says he really wishes he could be with us tonight, but he is back at home caring for a family member who is dealing with a health matter. So again, he expresses that he wishes he could be here tonight. Our next honoree is a centerman known for his incredible passing ability and silky mitts. With supreme stick handling skills, he piled up the points, was instrumental piece 
of the Boston Bruins Stanley Cup victories in 1939 and 41. A two-time Hart Trophy winner, he is regarded as one of the great skill forwards of his era. Here to posthumously receive this honor on his behalf, please welcome Dan Cowley, the son of our next all-centennial team honoree, forward Bill Cowley. Our next honoree is the Bruins' all-time leader in goals, who played an impressive 21 seasons in Boston. With his tough and physical style of play, he was a member of the Uke line alongside Bronco Horvath and Vic Stasiuk. A leader and a mentor, he led the Big Bad Bruins to two Stanley Cup champions, championships, of course, in 1970 and 72. With nearly seven decades of service to the Boston Bruins, his number nine hangs in the garden rafters. Ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Busick. Chief. Our next honoree was the perfect blend of tenacity and talent arriving to Boston from Vancouver in 1986. Over the course of his 10-year career as a Bruin, he overwhelmed opponents with his scoring prowess. He eclipsed the 50-goal mark in three seasons, the most storied of which was in 1994 when he potted 50 goals in just 44 games. His legacy is one of grit, resilience, and toughness and his number eight hangs in the garden rafters. Ladies and gentlemen, our next honoree, forward Cam Neely. forward on the All-Centennial team joined the Bruins in 1967 as part of one of the greatest trades in franchise history. A prolific scorer, he piled up 1,012 points as a Bruin and led the NHL in goals for six consecutive seasons from 1970 to 1975. His scoring was instrumental to the success of the Big Bad Bruins, helping of course to capture two Stanley Cup champions championships in 1970 and 72, and his number seven hangs in the garden rafters. Please welcome Phil Esposito. Oh, what a coincidence. Defensemen are going last. Here we go. On to the blue line. Our next honoree is one of the greatest players to ever grace that Boston blue line. Here in the Calder Trophy, his rookie year, became a perennial NHL All-Star, earning first or second team honors in 19 of his 22 seasons. A leader of some incredibly talented Bruins teams in the late 80s, he helped the black and gold reach the Stanley Cup final in 1988 and 1990. A treasured Bruins captain, his number 77 hangs in the garden rafters, Ladies and gentlemen, our next honoree, defenseman Raymond Bork. Our next honoree is one of the greatest competitors and athletes to ever wear the black and gold. As captain for all 14 years that he played in Boston, he led by example, embodying all the qualities that make a great Bruin. The image of him skating to the blue line with his jaw wired shut in the 2019 Stanley Cup Finals will live on in hockey lore forever as one of the greatest displays of signature Bruins grit. He is a 2011 Stanley Cup champion. Please welcome Zdeno Chara. Thank you so much. 
Our next honoree arrived in Boston from the New York Rangers in 1975, quickly made his mark with the Bees. Over the course of his eight-year career here in Boston, he helped the Bees claim five division titles and two conference championships. A great playmaker, he is regarded as one of the greatest defensemen of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next Centennial Team honoree, defenseman Brad Park. Our next honoree is in the NHL's first 20-year player and is one of the first elite members of the Boston Bruins. A physical presence, he was the right wing of the famous Dynamite line. The lone player in club history to have won three Stanley Cups as a Bruin, his number five hangs in the garden rafters. Here to po posthumously receive this honor on his behalf, please welcome Greg Taberge, grandson of our next honoree, Dit Clapper. Our next honoree arrived in Boston in 1926, became a crucial piece of the early Bruins dynasty. He was known for his relentless style of play and signature grit. A four-time Hart Trophy winner, his skill and swagger struck fear in the heart of his opponents. A two-time Stanley Cup champ, his number two hangs in the garden rafters. Here to posthumously receive this honor on his behalf, please welcome Ted Shore, son of the penultimate all-centennial team honoree defenseman Eddie Shore. Our final honoree signed with the Bruins when he was just 14 years old. Coming up through the ranks with the support from veteran leaders like Johnny Busick and others, the, he more than found his stride, becoming one of the greatest hockey players of all time. On May 10, 1970, he put home a pass from Derek Sanderson and soared into hockey immortality. Winner of the Calder Trophy, two Art Ross trophies, two Conn Smythe trophies, three Hart trophies, eight Norris trophies, and of course, the Stanley Cup on two occasions, his number four hangs in the garden rafters. Ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Orr. Once again, we want to say congratulations to all of the All Centennial Team nominees. It is a true honor to be celebrated as one of the top 20 most legendary players for an original six franchise. We'd like to welcome you all back onto the stage one more time for what will be an incredible group photo. And while you make your way back to the front, we wanted to take this opportunity to thank everyone for your continued support of the Boston Bruins Foundation. And just a few more reminders, if you are the high bidder on any auction item, stop by the check-in on your way up to pick up your item. And right now we're going to welcome everyone for the photos. And one more thing, there is an after party in the Oval Room across the hall if you wanted to check that out. Thank you, everyone. Get home safely. That's going to have to go down. Mr. Saturday Day, have they crowded the floor? It's awfully different without you. Don't get around my 
much anymore Thought I'd visit the club Got as far as the door I couldn't bear it without you Don't get around much anymore Darling, I guess My mind's more at you But nevertheless Why stir up memories Been invited on dates Might have gone, but what for? I couldn't bear it without you Don't get around much anymore Can you love me and be so untrue? 